You're watching the fourth video in a series demonstrating CFM Select. The purpose of this series is to provide a tutorial that highlights key features and benefits of Continental Fan's new selection software. This video is a tutorial on the model card. If you've watched the last two videos, you may have noticed that I've mentioned model cards several times. A model card is dedicated to a unique fan model. It contains specific technical information, accessories, and it allows you to configure a fan. I will work through two examples. The first example will arrive at a model card through the selection module, and the second will arrive at a model card from the catalog module. I'm on the selection module. If you've watched the last video, the input parameters and selection results should look familiar. For the purpose of this video, it doesn't matter which model I choose, so I will select this fan. The screen we're looking at is the model card. Something you may not have picked up on in other videos is that there is a hierarchy at the heading of each page. For example, we're on the model card right now. We can click this link to go back to the APK panel fan product line page, or we can go back to the panel and flange fan category page. We could also start over by clicking the catalog link Clicking Compare adds the fan model to the comparison module. Clicking Export to PDF downloads the model card as a technical document. The model card is broken up into several sections. We have the Description, Performance, Motor Section when applicable, 3D Visualization and Technical Parameters, Dimensions, Accessories, and a Download section. You can scroll as you normally do with the mouse, or you can click the links to jump to each section. The descriptions section has a short blurb about the product, as well as features and benefits. When you get to a model card from the selection module, the performance section will already be populated based on the selection results. If I want to change any data, I could do so, but for now I'm going to leave it as is. Since the product requires a motor selection, you'll notice the program selects a default motor. We can click the drop down menu and select any applicable motors, but for now I'll skip over this. The operating point information is summarized in this section. The required airflow and pressure are the inputs, and the working airflow and pressure are the outputs. The absorbed power is the power required at the operating point. The peak power is the maximum power along the fan curve. We also have speed, pitch, sound, efficiency, and the altitude and temperature that was used for the selection. The chart itself is interactive. You can see in the upper right corner the note about holding down control on the keyboard and using the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. You can also hold down the left mouse button and move the mouse to pan. Clicking R on the keyboard will reset the chart. For this particular fan, we have three distinct groups of fan curves. This group is the 1750 RPM group. This group is the 1170 RPM group. And this group is the 870 RPM group. The darkened regions are areas of overlap. To clean this up a little bit, I'll select 1750 RPM from the speed drop down box and click Submit. Notice as I move the cursor across the curves, the RPM and pitch of the blades are called out. The airflow is called out at the top of the vertical crosshair, and the static pressure is called at the right horizontal crosshair. You can also click anywhere to set the new operating point with the cursor. If you would like to view efficiency or power curves, you can click the link. These curves are linked to the operating point, so they will update accordingly. I mentioned that the peak power is somewhere along the curve. It appears that the peak power is somewhere around 1600 CFM. If I select the CFM on the fan curve for this pitch, you can see that these curves will be updated. 
Moving on to the motor section, you will see a table with motor information. To select a motor, you may either check the box on the left, or you may click the select icon on the right. Like other tables, you can sort the columns in ascending or descending order by clicking on the arrows. You can further filter the table by clicking on the column headings and check the boxes next to the values that you want to include. The motor power and max speed columns have input boxes where you can manually enter minimum and maximum acceptable values. The technical parameter section shows a static table of the technical details. If you create an account and get assigned to a Continental Fan Sales Manager, you will also be given access to this 3D visualization area. Click and hold to spin the fan model around, or use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. The dimensions section shows a generic drawing of the fan. The accessories section shows available options for the fan. As I move the cursor over a row, you can see the image changes. Alternatively, if I use the arrows on the image, you can see the rows highlight. If you have access to pricing, the accessory table will show the list price and extended price as you increase quantities. The download section contains documentation that you can download and save, such as catalogs and installation and maintenance manuals. If you have been assigned to a Continental Fan Sales Manager, you will also have the ability to download 3D CAD files. The 3D files and visualizations are generic in nature. These will not necessarily include the accessories you've chosen. However, the idea is to provide you with an overall footprint of the fan so you can lay it into your system to check fitment. From the model card, you can add fans and accessories to a project. To do that, you use the product configurator. Again, if you have access to pricing, you will see list prices and extended prices in this column. You can also change quantities of fans and accessories. Note that the quantity of motors is directly proportional to the number of fans that require motor selection. If you need the same fan with various motor voltages, you'll have to add those to the project individually. Like the header, there are quick links to jump to each section of the model card. The operating point is also summarized in this window. Finally, you can add the fan to a project. Let me approach the model card from the catalog. From the inline fans, I'll choose the AXP and I'll randomly choose a AXP250. You can see that everything looks the same. The motor section isn't shown for this fan since it's already built into the motorized impeller. If I jump to the performance section, you can see that the design point is left blank. I can either use the input boxes and click submit, or I can pick a point on the chart. The unfilled circle is the required point. But since the speed is set to standard, meaning a speed control is not used, the operating point ran up to the intersection between the system and fan curves. Let's say that the required airflow point is the point that we absolutely need. I can change the speed selection to variable and click Submit. You can now see that the fan was slowed down to intersect the design point. The shaded region is the acceptable range for speed control. Also notice that if you hover the cursor within the region, the RPM will temporarily be displayed. For now, let's clear everything and click Submit. Let's pretend that we're now a distributor who needs to replenish some stock, along with the VSC3 speed control. We're not necessarily interested in the operating point for stocking purposes. So let's just add 10 controls from the accessories section and 10 fans from the product configurator. We can now add these items to the project. That concludes the model card tutorial for CFM Select. The next video will demonstrate the workflow of a project. If you have any questions, please contact your sales manager or you may email me directly. Thank you for watching.